If you've ever wanted to explore the other flavors of professional wrestling, but you just needed a starting point, well, you're in luck because my new series, Starting Points, starts right now. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. And if you are passionate about the craft of professional wrestling, and you're never done learning all about it, then you're in the exact right place. So make sure to join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe down below and enable notifications while you're at it. That way you never miss out on a video. Today marks the start of a new series here on the channel that I'm calling Starting Points. When wrestling first started to take over every aspect of my life, back when I was a teenager, I wanted to ingest it all. I started rapidly collecting VHS tapes of professional wrestling from all around the globe. I wanted to expand my tastes beyond just what was being served up to me on cable TV every week in southeastern Pennsylvania. But in many cases, I really struggled to understand and genuinely appreciate these other forms of professional wrestling because I had no context. I didn't fully grasp what was taking place, especially in the cases when that wrestling was being presented in a foreign language. All of that was a barrier to entry, which in many cases I found a bit daunting. If you can relate to any of what I went through back in the day, then you'll be pleased to learn that the Starting Point series is here to remedy precisely that situation. I'm here to aid you as you start to expand your tastes in professional wrestling outside of just the corporate sports entertainment offerings that get cranked out of the sausage factories week after week. So up first, I want to crack open just one aspect of pro -res, Japanese pro wrestling. And we're going to start with the heavyweights. And to supply some really critical context for understanding what we're going to see, well, we got to lean on a couple historical heavyweights to help us get there. If we're talking about the evolution of pro -res, that conversation has to begin with Ricky Dozan. He's the first true national level star in Japanese pro wrestling. For a good equivalent, think Hulk Hogan or John Cena. For the 11 year period that Ricky Dozan is the face of pro -res, 1952 to 1963, Japanese wrestling begins to enter the popular consciousness in a way it had never previously enjoyed. But after Ricky Dozan is killed in 1963, a period of unrest follows for nine years. It is then that two of Ricky Dozan's protégés each found their own pro wrest organizations. In the case of Antonio Inoki, it's New Japan Pro Wrestling. In the case of Giant Baba, it's All Japan Pro Wrestling. And All Japan builds its fan base throughout the 70s and the 80s, reaching a really critical turning point on June 8, 1990. This is the beginning of the golden era of All Japan Pro Wrestling, in my opinion, an era that endures for 10 years. It is on that date that aging veteran of the squared circle, Jumbo Saruta, passes the torch to young up-and-comer Mitsuhara Misawa. And what follows is an incredible series of heavyweight dominated main event matches that are as gripping as any you will ever see. Mitsuhara Misawa cuts his teeth in the 80s wrestling under the guise of Tiger Mask 2. He's the second man to don the mantle of the popular anime character after the original, Satoru Sayama, retired from pro wrestling in 1983. But eventually Misawa unmasks and starts wrestling under his given name. In the 1990s, in All Japan Pro Wrestling, the main event heavyweight scene is dominated by Misawa and his eternal rival Toshiaki Kawada, as well as guys like Kenta Kobashi, Akira Taue, rising star Jun Akiyama, and choice guest stars like Dr. Death, Steve Williams. Your starting point for the heavyweights of pro Res is June 3rd, 1994. It is arguably the finest singles match between those eternal rivals, Mitsuhara Misawa and Toshiaki Kawada. And this match is for the richest prize in all of All Japan Pro Wrestling. 
It's for a championship made up of three separate titles, collectively referred to as the Triple Crown. This match takes place inside Budokan Hall, which is jam-packed to the gills for this encounter. It's a legendary venue in Japan. It's even hosted concerts by the likes of The Beatles and Ozzy Osbourne and Cheap Trick. And for this Triple Crown title bout, the fans are evenly divided between Misawa and Kawada. The real life history between the two, which dates all the way back to when they were classmates in high school, only adds more fuel to the fire. Okay, so here's what you need to know about these guys before you watch. Misawa is clad in his classic colors, green and white. And his signature moves include an elbow strike, the face lock submission hold, and the tiger driver, a double underhook power bomb which he sits out with. It's a move he himself innovated back when he was wrestling under the guise of Tiger Mask 2. And Toshiaki Kawada is wearing the yellow and black. He's feared for his kicks, his stretch plumb submission hold, and his folding power bomb variation, a power bomb that's followed up directly by a folding press pinning combination. An important note about All Japan in this era. Close-fisted strikes, punches, are an instant disqualification in All Japan Pro Wrestling. So during the course of this match, when one of the competitors throws an even questionable blow at his opponent, you're going to see the referee is all over him. And the authority exuded by the referee in this situation, conveying that None of this is going to be tolerated, no matter how high the stakes of the match might be, only enhances the drama. This is the sort of thing that could never be created in an instance where the referee's authority has been undermined or appears to be weaker. Can you tell how much I love this match? I can't wait to watch it again. It is 35 of the most brutal minutes of professional wrestling you will ever see. As two longtime rivals work out the personal issues between them to devastating effect in front of a rabid fan base. Everything in this match means something. And by the end of it, everyone is simply exhausted. Even the commentators, even the audience is exhausted by the end of it. And in many decade end reviews, this one match was chosen time and time again as the single greatest match of the entire 1990s. Some people go so far as to say that this is the greatest singles match in pro wrestling history. Are you excited to watch it? Because it's appearing over here right now. Leave a like before you click on it, and then let's dive in to Masawa versus Kawada 6394.